بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله We give thanks and praise to Allah سبحانه وتعالى for giving us the opportunity of praying salat al-isha in jama'ah for verily praying Salat al-Isha in Jama'ah give you half of the night in Ibadah as Ajr and whoever prays Salat al-Fajr in Jama'ah and Salat al-Isha it will be as if he has prayed the whole night in Ibadah. For therefore, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that the most difficult prayer on the Munafiqoon are Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Isha. Had they known the ajr of Salat al-Isha, they would have come even though they would crawl. For therefore, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us among the munafiqun. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, last week and the week before we have spoken about sincerity. Sincerity, which means ikhlas in our life, interaction and worship we mentioned that this will determine our status in the eyes of allah Azza wa Jal. no matter how kind you are towards a person if your heart is dirty and you're doing that to show off or as a hypocrite in the eyes of allah Azza wa Jal, you will not be elevated no matter how much ibadah that you do if you're doing that for the sake of someone else or to show off it will have no value in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal Abadan. And we spoke about that last week. My brothers, we need to understand something. Today, the reason why we find out that the masjid, all the masajid are empty. We find out that our brothers and our sisters are in distress and depression. We find out some Muslim out there where they feel that they've got no supporter. They believe that Allah Azza wa the Almighty, their master, is not of a support to them. They believe that the people with beard or the sister with the hijab are not of support to them. So what happened? They feel, they feel outcasted. They feel that they do not belong anywhere. They feel humiliated. Yes. Many people feel humiliated. They feel down. And this is what the dhunur makes you feel. And this is what the sin that you commit make you feel. You gamble, you cheat, you deceive people, you fall into haram, you commit zina, adultery, theft, what happened to you later on? Do you feel proud of yourself? Abaddon. You feel disgraced, humiliated. When you're exposed, or when you want to go back to Allah Azza wa Jal, you feel that you're alone and there's no one around you. Where shaitan starts to make you feel that even God is against you. This is the feeling of shaitan. Makes you feel lonely. Loneliness is one of the ways of shaitan so that he can actually attack you. The only way for a wolf to be able to attack a sheep is when he sees the sheep walking alone. That's the way shaitan attack people to make them feel lonely. People in depression and stress, what happened to them? They like loneliness. They don't like to be around people. 
and depression, taking pills of depression. I mean, you tell me with that work or no. I mean, pills of depression, you tell me, Allah mustahan. When we had this before, new one. Do you know why? It's because we have failed to understand the concept of Allah's mercy on us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned his mercy in the Quran towards us through the sinners. Remember sinners, people who fall into haram. Allah has showed us his mercy in the Quran through those who disobey him. Allah has showed us mercy in the Quran through those who go against his rule and regulation. You might be thinking what I'm talking about. But when you look at that in a different lens and perspective, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most gracious, after Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned about how he wants to deal with you and those who say la ilaha illallah this is when you come to know the concept of mercy to Allah Azza wa Jal listen to that and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that the, the day Allah Azza wa Jal created mercy he showed us mercy one person of his mercy in the Quran in this dunya and 99 person he kept with him Mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Speak about mercy today. Today we find people, or we find the masajid empty, is because people have fallen into sin. They have not understood the concept of mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal, where Allah has used them in the Quran. <clears throat> people, people who fall into haram, Allah has used them in the Quran to show how merciful Allah is. I ask you a question as the father. Your children come to you and you have some rules and regulation you've set in your house. They constantly disobey. They constantly broke or break these kind of rules. How are you going to feel? Are you going to call them my son? Today you're going to call them, Ya Bunay, la taf'al hadha, don't do this. Tomorrow you'll do them, oh beta, ye, ye nekas, don't do this, my beta, don't do this. Fah. <laughs> After three, four days, the name will change. For how long are you going to tell him better? For how long are you going to tell him, Ya Bunay, oh my son? After five, six times, some animal was going to come out, صح? Unfortunately, some parents, they use, I don't want to say the words, different words of animals, they, tell, they address it to their children because they're fed up of their rule being broken in the house. Look at the mercy of Allah as how he used that toward those who break his rule. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we mentioned this because this is the second chapter of the Riyadh al-Salihin that we're talking about. So somebody just picked up somewhere. Last we spoke about al-Ikhlas, today we speak about al-Tawbah ila Allah azza wa jal. Al-Inaba ila Allah azza wa jal. Going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You compare yourself which cannot be compared. We cannot compare our attributes and qualities to Allah Azza wa Jal. Look how you just feel fed up and you feel disgraced when someone actually disobey your rule. Look Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who has created you and has set some rule for you to follow in order for you to enter Jannah. And in spite of this, you break those rules, you fall into haram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submit yourself to Allah. Go back to Allah azza wa jal and submit yourself to Allah azza wa jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <clears throat> you go into any kind of holy scripture and find out in which verse of these holy book that tells you God wants to forgive you. Wallahu yuridu ayyatuba alaykum. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to forgive you. And in spite of all these rules he has put, and he knows you are actually disobeying him, what does he say? Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. All those people who believe, go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Repent to Allah azza wa jal with sincere repentance. I'm not even speaking about the reward of you asking for forgiveness. What I'm trying to tell you over here is the mercy of Allah azza wa jal and how he linked that to those people who fall into haram. Allah azza wa jal mentioned in the Quran the reason why I mentioned about how, for how long you're going to call your child, my son, my son, after he keeps on disobeying you, Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned those people who has constantly fallen into haram. You commit zina, you commit theft, adultery, gambling, magic, shirk. You look haram, you listen to haram. You do haram, you walk towards haram. Allah Azza wa calling in the Quran, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Oh my slave, oh my slave who have transgressed against my commandments. Oh my slave. Huh? Did he say, oh mujrimun? Did he say, oh, you sinners, come back to Allah abadan. Allah didn't say this in the Quran. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Oh, people have fallen into haram every day. Oh, those who are not wearing the hijab every day. Oh, those who are not praying five times a day. Oh, those who have neglected the rules and regulation of Islam. Oh, my slave, I created you. And I created Jannah for you, and I want you to end. I want you to end the Jannah. Do not despair. Do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Where did Allah Azza wa mention this? To those who do good, to those who do bad. Allah is showing His mercy to those who do bad. Now imagine those who do good. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. Allah Azza wa is trying to tell you over here, He did not create you over here. Taha, ma anzana alaka al-Qur'ana li tashqa. We did not send down the Qur'an to make it distress over you, to make it feel like a burden, like how some people believe. The Qur'an was revealed in order to make you feel good. Mubashira wa nadira. The Prophet as a glad tider, the Quran has come in order to give you good news. That's a good news. You're falling into sin, you're falling into shirk. Allah is telling you, listen, the door of Tawbah is open. The door of Tawbah is open. And I mentioned it last time and always say that. Who are the people who are in Jannah? On Yom Al Qiyamah, when you look at the people of Ahl Jannah, who are they? Are they those people who, from the time they got baligh, they kept on doing salah and Quran and zakah until they die? No, Allah. Nahnu, this ummah, or all the ummah, from Adam until Yom Al Qiyamah, each and every one will fall into sin. We've been created like this. We've been created as insan, and we tend to forget the commandments of Allah, like what happened to. Adam and Hawa. <clears throat> our nafs been created in the nafs and amaratun bisu. And our nafs will make it prone to fall into haram. We forget we fall into haram. And this ummah, like the Prophet mentioned, I mean, this um, we are going to fall into haram. We are going to commit sin. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do is to make tawbah. We don't commit sin, that ummah will be removed and another ummah will come when we commit sin and ask tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal. This is that status of our purpose of life. 
This world is filled up with trials. Our family is trial. Our wealth is trial. Our workplace is a trial. We come to the message is a trial. Trial means a place where you may fall into sin. You go outside now, you can't, sometimes I was just talking in, in the other message. When I mean, you go outside, you have to always lower your gaze. Because you have people whose dress are very immodest. You have to lower your gaze. You go shopping, fitna. In the house is fitna. Your family is fitna. Allah mentioned, fitna. It's there everywhere. You imagine the door of Tawbah is closed? Imagine the door of Tawbah is closed. Khalad, we're doomed to hell. One of the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned, why do we always, when we wake up in the morning, we say, Alhamdulillah, ladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhin nushur. Last night you went to bed, your soul went to Allah Azza wa Jalla, and your body was just like a body on the bed. You were dead. Had Allah Azza wa Jalla don't give your soul permission to come back, we pray yourself to Janaza today. Yeah. How many people <clears throat> who's gone to bed yesterday? And we call them, oh, they pass away peacefully asleep. Yes or no? When people, they go to bed, they don't wake up. Wake them up in the morning, khalaf, they passed away. Medical more came and took the ruh away. Oh, the ruh never came back. <laughs> That's how we call it. What do we say? Ah, oh, subhanAllah. He passed away peacefully. He didn't even, we don't even know what's gone before his ruh was removed. That person, he did not get another chance to come back in the dunya. So each and every day, <clears throat> we get a chance to come back to the dunya. What does that mean? It means Allah is giving us another chance to make tawbah. You, we go back to the father, to the son. They've done something wrong. You give them a chance, yes or no? Tomorrow, <clears throat> they do the same thing. You give them another chance. Third, fourth, fifth. Does your patience stay the same or you wear off? You wear off. It's over. So I'm not gonna I'm gonna punish you now. How old are you? 50. How old am I? 36. How old are you? 60. It means that for 60 years, yalla, you became bad at the age of 12. Okay, for 48 years, Allah has given you every day for what? A chance of 48 years Allah has given you until today. For what? To increase your status in the world, your fame, your wealth. Now, for you to make tawbah, it's another chance. You wake up tomorrow, you come Salat al-Fajr, al Why do we say Alhamdulillah when we wake up in the morning? You've given us back our life, Ya Allah, because Ya Allah, you've given me about my, my life back in order for me to make Tawbah again. Yesterday I couldn't make it, today I will make it. Because Allah says, wa ila rabbikum wa Go back to Allah and submit yourself to Allah. Today, if that concept will be understood by the people out there who are sinning right now, they will come to the masjid and cry because they know the door of Torah is open. No matter what sin you do, my brother and my sisters, no matter what sin we commit, even though it is shirk, now, now, while we are alive, it is shirk. And we come to our sins where we know Tawheed is what Allah is looking for. We make Tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jalla, Allah will forgive us, even though we've committed shirk. As long as we're alive, we made tawbah from shirk, Allah will forgive us. Imagine. Subhanallah. You might be thinking, Allah Azza wa mentioned about that. But we go back to the question, on Yom al Qiyamah, when you look at the people in Jannah, like, wow, look at those people. Jannah is filled up. Put that in your mind. Jannah is filled up, the population of Jannah is filled up with people who committed sin. Like us, we committed haram. And then what they did? They repented to Allah. 
They became the beloved slave of Allah Azza wa Jal because Allah says, "Inna Allah yhibu tawabin wa yhibu mutatahir." Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned He loved those people who go back to Him. Ajib, it's we feel it's strange. How much Allah Azza wa Jal loves people who fall into haram and go back to Him. By the time you are. What Allah is talking about now, even though to those people who are doing the haram, knowingly it is haram. When you're doing something haram, but you don't know it is haram, you're not going to be responsible for it, will you? No, you won't. So when Allah is saying now, you are the muznibun, you are the usat, you are the people who fall into sin. Who are those who fall into sin? Those who know this is haram and they still do it. You understand where I'm coming from? I want we all ourselves, myself, to understand this point over here where the muthnibun, the people who fall into sin, they become a muthnib, they become a sinner when they are aware that this is a sin. If you're not aware that lying is a sin and you keep on lying, it's not a sin for you. You know why? Because you're not aware of it. The pen is lifted from those people who, who are not aware of the ruling. I mean, you don't know that, for example, going outside and, and, and be part of a magical person or, or, be, or go to a fortune teller. You don't know that, for example, eating pork is haram or drinking wine is haram. You don't know. You never heard it before. Or that never came to you in the place where you live. For example, you live in Alaska, Atlantic, and you don't even know where you live. You don't know the ruling of it. Is it haram for you? Will, will Allah, it is haram, but will Allah hold you responsible for it? No. You know something is haram. And your nafs has made you fall into the haram. And you know that, no, I'm going to go back to Allah Azza wa Jal and ask for forgiveness and the remorseful regret. And I will not do it again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promise. Jannah to this person. Not only forgiveness of the sin, Jannah. And you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be happy? The time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes ha the happiest. When you might be thinking, when does Allah become the happiest? Tahajjud maybe? By the time we're making siyam? Maybe when we're doing Umrah or Hajj at Mecca or in Arafah. Abadillah. No matter where you are, no matter where you are, you raise your hands with sincerity. Ya Allah, you know how weak we are in regards to our soul falling into haram. Ya Allah, I've made haram. I've looked at haram, I listened at har to haram, I've done haram. Ya Allah, by your mercy and your forgiveness, please forgive me. Allahu ashaddu farhan bi tawbati ahadikum. Allah Azza wa Jal become the happiest when you raise your hand and you ask for forgiveness. I'm not talking about the hajj, not talking about siyam, not talking about hajj. Allah is speaking about At-Tawbah, At-Tawbah, what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned over here, where he said, Anas bin Malik narrated that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahu afrahu bi tawbati abdihi min ahadikum saqata ala ba'irihi wa qad adallahu fi ardin falah. Muttafaqun alayhi. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, they really, they really, indeed, Allah becomes happy, is delighted. I ask you a question. You've gone out, coming back from, or you're going to Pakistan or India, or going back to the West hometown, in your bag, in your baggage, that you put on the cargo, you have all your important stuff. Your file, certificates, your probably your laptops, 
your assets, your gold, everything in there. And you come back home, you find out that your bag is lost. How do you feel? How do you feel? Sad or happy? Sad. Definitely sad. You feel you've lost everything. Your original certificate, your master, your PhD, what you've done is all gone. You're not going to get it. They told you, it's gone. How do you feel? You feel bad. Sit down, you cry. Even though people come and tell you, sbur, sbur, ya, you know, be patient, be patient. La, la. You have detached a part of your heart. And then suddenly, someone come and tap your back and tell you, oh, you Muhammad, that's your bag. How do you feel? Happy. Happy. Top of the world. You carry on your journey now. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, made that similitude to a person who is carrying his load and a camel in the desert. You know, if you have a camel in the desert, all your food in there, if the camel is gone, you're dead. Yes or no? Because all your food is in there. The camel is gone, is lost. You without a camel. And suddenly the camel appears in front of you. How do you feel? Wait, got my camel back. Alhamdulillah, my life is back. How do you feel? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more happy towards a person who asks for forgiveness compared to that man who just got his camel back. Allahu Akbar. The reason why we said Allah becomes happy is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at the heart of the person. Because the heart knows that Allah Azza wa Jalla is the maker. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the person knows and he acknowledges that Allah is a ghaffar at tawwab. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see. He acknowledges that I am the tawwab. I'm al ghafir. I'm al rahman al rahim. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see. Sometimes you may just have remorse and regret in your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just looking at the heart, into this heart, he may forgive you. And the story we're going to tell you about the story next week about, you know, the man who, who killed 99 persons, 99 people. For when you look at the people of Ahl Jannah, they all people committed sin, but they repented to Allah Azza wa Jal. But subhanAllah, this is something that we need to understand. Had people out there understood the concept of Allah's mercy through the sinners, today they'll be here. Today they would know that, listen, well, I may be an adulterer, I may be a, a fornicator, a magician, I may be someone, a thief, a stealer, but wait a minute, I think, you know what? If you want to go back to Allah Azza wa Jal, will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me? Sahih, will. You go back to Allah Azza wa Jal. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about Jannah of the istighfar. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about Jannah in the Quran, many times you find before it is addressing to those people who fall into sin. Yes, Allah Azza wa mentioned about those people who perform salah, or zakah, or jihad, all these will enter Jannah. But sometimes when you think about when Allah mentioned about it in the Quran, for example, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu tubu ila Allah tawbatan nasuha asa rabbukum أن يكثر عنكم سيئات ويدخلكم جنة. Go back to Allah Azza wa Jalla with sincere repentance and perhaps Allah Subhanahu wa Taala perform will forgive your sins and make you among the people of Ahl Jannah. Allah Allah. وسارعوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة عرض. Allah says, go back to words, forgiveness. You know, when someone tells you, you tell your son, go back home, go back home before I hit you. You see him in the street, you know, playing dirty. Okay, do this right now before I hit you. This is what we speak, yes or no? 
When we give a command, we follow it with some as a fear, as a threat, exactly. We give a command, we follow it with a threat. Allah is asking, is saying of a command, follow it with ni'mah. Go back to Allah. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةً Go back to Allah Azza wa Jal and ask for forgiveness and for you is Jannah. SubhanAllah. Had all people out there would know about those kind of mercy through the sinners, Allah, the people would have been here today. Our sisters will understand that, yes, it's time for us to wear the hijab. I haven't worn it for like 30, 35 years. It's okay. The door of Tawbah is open. Allah the most merciful. How many times many Muslims they find out that because they got some wrong information, they feel that, you know what? I don't think God's going to forgive me. Because for like 50 years, I haven't prayed. So, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving a person who for 50 years has been in shirk, and he says, La ilaha illallah today, and he died, when Allah gave him Jannah or not? Jannah. Because he said, La ilaha illallah. If you're someone who constantly, someone, sometimes you pray, sometimes you never pray, Allah Azza wa Jal is the most merciful, most gracious. And Allah wants you to repent to Allah Azza. Never, ever think that you are alone. Abadan, never, ever think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not watching over you. No matter how sinful you are, each and every time you've been disobeying Allah, yes or no, for 60 years, who's been providing you? Allah. Who's been covering you? Allah. Who hasn't exposed you? Allah. Who has kept you into a health until 60 years? Allah. Who has given you your life every morning? Allah. So you think if you go back to Allah, he won't accept your forgiveness? Never. Don't think like this. Allah will accept your forgiveness. Even though you are on the deathbed, but you haven't fallen into some kind of medical mode about to come to you yet, you may tell that Allah will forgive you. But that doesn't mean that you had to wait for that time. Because shaitan will always make you feel that time is still there. Akhi will do it tomorrow. You know, the thing that, you know, procrastination, procrastination from shaitan. The more you procrastinate, the more he takes you away from your goal and objectives. Akhi, I'll do it tomorrow, inshallah. Hey, Allah, tomorrow. To pray, we'll start tomorrow. Tawbah, tomorrow. Hajj, inshallah, inshallah. We're going to go for a hajj, inshallah, maybe next year. Oh, I will go for a hajj maybe when I retire, 60 years old. Not now. Procrastinate. Through, pro through procrastination, medical mode can come and meet you. And when it comes to you, he takes your life and he goes. He's got no respite. He doesn't know anything that has to give you time or no. That's why we always need to be prepared. That's why we always had to go back to Allah Azza wa Jal. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you think he, he was someone who supposed to be making tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal? No. His past sins, future sins, present sins have been forgiven by Allah. He got the key of genital firdaus. Did he have to make tawbah to Allah? Every day. From the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Was mentioned over here. Wallahi, إني لا أستغفر الله وأتوب إليه في اليوم أكثر من سبعين مرة. رواه البخاري. والله, indeed, I repent to Allah عز وجل in a day more than seventy times. Who is this? And Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم. Ask myself and ask yourself today how many times you may tell it to Allah. Ask yourself now. Don't answer. How many times you made? Three times after Fajr? Three times after Fatah, uh, Dhuhr? 
free time after if we prayed and if we did it. And Nabi Sallallahu per day, more than 17, another hadith, more than a hundred times. He will make istighfar. In another hadith, in a majlis, you're sitting now, he's making istighfar. SubhanAllah, he's, he's talking. He's teaching revelation. And in that majlis, he had already made more than a hundred times istighfarullah. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where are we? Don't you think that we deserve, we, we need the tawbah of Allah more than the Prophet Sallallahu Allah. This is where we need to go on, my brothers and my sisters on the other side. This is something that we need to actually put in our mind that the door of Tawbah is open. That door of the masjid is the door of Tawbah. When you're coming into the masjid, Tawbah, Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to be or wants you to actually meet him on Yom Al Qiyamah with no sin. Let me end with this. If you look at the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, if you look at the five pillars of Islam, have we ever thought that many things that we do in the world as ibadah, it leads towards forgiveness? Everything we do, forgiveness. SubhanAllah. Everything we do, it will forgive you. Let's go first. The first pillar of Islam is a shahadatain. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Qala al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and qala la ilaha illallah dakhala jannah. Whoever said la ilaha illallah will enter jannah. Whoever meet, the, whoever meet Allah azza wa jal on yawm al-qiyamah with la ilaha illallah in his heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all his sins even though his sins are the amount of the form of the sea. In another hadith, even though his sins are the side of the heaven and the earth. <clears throat> if he comes to me with la ilaha illallah, I will forgive him. <clears throat> Many hadith like this. As salah. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned As salawat al khams. Ramadan ila Ramadan. Jum'a ila Jum'a. Mukaffarat ma baynahuma idha jtunibat al kabair. The fadili prayer that you do, the sin that you commit in between them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you. The sajda that you do, the sin that you have on your shoulder is thrown down and is forgiven. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned about the wudu, about the salah. How would you feel if you take a bath into a river five times a day? Would you feel clean or dirty? Clean. This is how the five daily prayers. At the end of the day, you feel clean, spiritually. Because throughout the day, the sin that you committed had been forgiven because of the fact that he prayed, you prayed at the right time. as -salah. Third, pillars, sadaqah, or zakah. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, sadaqah, remove your sin, extinguish it, or forgive your sin the same way. Water extinguishes fire. In another hadith, the same way. Fire removed the dirt from the steel. Maghfirah. Shahadatain leads towards maghfirah. Tawbah. Salah leads towards tawbah. Your zakah and your sadaqah leads towards tawbah. Forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal. Your siyam. Man sama ramadana imana wa ihtisaba. Ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbih. Whoever fast 30 days of Ramadan with conviction, expecting reward from Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all his sin. What he has done before. So Siyam Ramadan leads towards Tawbah. 
What's the last one? Last pillar? Hajj. What the Prophet Muhammad hasn't mentioned about Hajj. What are the good for Hajj? And he does not get upset and angry. He does his head supposed to be done. He come back like a newborn baby. And Hajj Mabrur, an accepted Hajj, is that when you've gone there, you've done it properly, you come back, it's accepted, there's no reward except Al Jannah. When you look at the five pillars of Islam, my brothers, it leads you towards forgiveness. This is the mercy of Allah. Have we thought about it? The mercy of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And that's only one person of what we know that was sent down. Yes or no? The 99 person with Allah, do we know? We don't know. That is why each and every surah in the Quran starts with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Tawbah ana da ikhtilaf. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. 17 times minimum. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. All praise be to Allah, the Lord of the universe, the most gracious, the most merciful. Again, the most gracious, the most merciful. To emphasize, to let you know or understand that this Lord is the most merciful, the most compassionate, the most grateful, the most uh, gracious, repenter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, love when you repent, the all forgiver, the most repent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you all to enter Jannah. Even though you're a prostitute outside, you're a drug dealer outside, you're a mushrik outside in the temple, wherever you are actually, you're a black magician outside. The door of Tawbah is open. Until you see medical mode. Until the sun rises from the west. And these two times, the day of October is closed. We give you time enough. Before that, 63 years, 50 years, 25 years, we've given you chance over chance over chance over chance. Who do you blame on your Qiyamah? Yourself. And Shaytan will say, فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ مَا أَنَا بِمُسْخِخِكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُسْخِخِكُمْ don't blame me and blame yourself. This is the trick of shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the tawabin, among those who repent and go back to Allah azza wa jalla. The way of making tawbah, my brothers and my sisters, is that it has arkan and pillars, which we're going to speak about next week. Making tawbah to Allah with your tongue, with your heart. You regret about what you've done and you don't go back to it and you don't expose yourself. Mm. This is one of the way of getting your sinful. Don't expose yourself. You used to be a thief, a stealer, whatever before. Don't go and tell people now, you know, I used to be a drug dealer. Before. When Allah has actually covered your sin, leave it covered. Don't go and expose your sin and Allah don't like it. If Allah has covered and did not expose your sin, who are you to go and expose your sin? The same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, he, he will cover some sin, he will expose it to you. Allah Azza wa Jal on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, he will show you your life. Like we see now, how Allah ta'ala a'lam. You will see your life, you will get your book, even your right hand and your left hand. Your sin will be shown to you. Do you deny? You won't deny. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, for verily today I've forgiven you. For some people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't even show them their sin what they have committed. That's why one of the name of Allah is a sitir. That he covered the sin in this dunya and the Akhirah. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq, to make tawbah to Allah azza wa every day. Akhi, we're walking towards home. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. 
we're waiting in the waiting room astaghfirullah and on the plane astaghfirullah you're driving towards your work astaghfirullah astaghfirullah let your tongue be wet with istighfar you can never know that istighfar could open you door to jannah subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik if you have any question you may ask me in the time so, like, uh, I have actually two questions, but they are similar, they're related. Just be quick. Yeah. Okay, uh, so my, my, first, my first question is like, uh, so people who don't like repent, like they do a bad of they don't repent very often, they do not go to Jannah? Or... They go to Jannah. Anyone who says, La ilaha illallah will go to Jannah. Like if someone makes salah, salah is, is, a, is a sign of a repenter. Yeah. Because you're coming back to Allah Azza wa Jal. You go back home, you come back to the masjid, Salat al-Fajr, inaba. You're coming back to Allah Azza wa Jal. Entering Jannah, entering Jahannam, that's in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, because, like, you mentioned about the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu yes. wa Like, he forgives everything. He yeah. Uh -huh. So some people would falsely think, like, okay, so if Allah is the most merciful, I can sometimes go drink some alcohol, some I will move it like that, I will, I will uh, do zina. But good question, good question. Now, people could misunderstand me and go out and do some kind of haram because Allah is so merciful. By the time you're doing the haram, what guarantee do you have that medical mother is waiting for you at that time? That's why you don't do it. I've got a question here. If elderly was involved in shirk and felt they were in the right and eventually passed away due to illness, which meant they couldn't speak, will they be forgiven? That's in the hand of Allah Azza wa Jal. Many of our forefathers fell into shirk, but they loved Allah. Many of our forefathers fell into bid'ah because they loved Allah. They did not have the knowledge of how to worship Allah. Yes or no? Well, our our forefathers, let's say for example, an example. Our forefathers going to Darga, yes or no? Darga, the shrine. They're going to ask the Darga. They never knew that was haram. As a matter of fact, they brought Islam to us, yes or no? Yes. They never had education. They were going to the Darga to please Allah, yes or no? But it was a haram and shirk action. Can I come and say, yes, this is haram and this is shirk. People who die doing this are mushrikun. And Allah do not forgive people who commit shirk. But, look at me, Jayid, and listen to me. That person who did that, he did not have knowledge that it was haram. He did not have knowledge that was haram. He was doing that to please Allah. Will Allah put him in Jahannam? Out of the mercy of Allah, what I know? No, because the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, mentioned that if a person is not does not know the ruling, the three kind of people that they're not responsible for what they do. If you don't know the ruling, if you forgot the ruling, or if you are forced to do something. Then in the three scenario, you don't get the sin of it. So that person who died our forefathers were doing haram, who were into shirk or bid'ah, believing they were doing something good, like we spoke about Mawlid in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam last week. It came from our forefathers. Maybe our, our forefathers has done that in order to, of course, to please Allah, but they never knew how to show the love to the Prophet, so they came up with something. All right, it's bid'ah, it's bid'ah, but they never knew the danger of bid'ah. Will Allah put them to have fire? I cannot say yes or no. Allah is the one who is the one who is the one who is the one But if someone know what he was doing and he died upon shirk, he got constant reminder that it's shirk and he carried on doing it, he'll be responsible in Yom Al Qiyamah. Allah Ta'ala A'lam. Second question. Several TikTokers expose their passing in a way to convey a message to the youth. Is this permissible or not permissible? Question over here is, I would say, it's not something to be done. The question is, people call themselves da'i. 
or they don't call themselves da'i, but they go out there in order to motivate people to come back to the deen. They tell people their past. I used to be a gangster. I used to be this, I used to be that. Well, I know the intention of the person in order to tell people, even though you're a gangster, you can still, Allah can still turn your heart towards Islam. We understand where they're coming from. But what I know from the hadith of the Prophet is that when Allah gets angry at a person who has committed sin in the night, and in the morning he goes out, he tells people, I've done so and so and such and such. When Allah has covered his sin, when Allah has hide or has hidden his sin. So I personally believe that's my intake that I don't need to go out there and tell people I used to be a drug dealer. So Allah Azza wa Jalla, Umar bin Khattab didn't do this. They knew, people knew him. But he didn't come and tell people the people of the next of the generation when he came a Khalifa that I used to, for example, bury daughters and have, I used to drink, I used to be a drunkard, I used to do this. And no, he never used that. He used the Quran and the Sunnah. Best. Had using my past as a source to call people towards Islam, the Sahaba would have done it. Because they were the worst of people in Jahiliya. Yes or no? They were the worst of people in Jahiliya. They could have used their experience to call people to Islam, but they use the Quran and the Sunnah. There's nothing that can bring light or guidance except for the Quran and the Sunnah. That's why I believe Allah Ta'ala A'lam. Which chapter of Riyadh al Salihin are we following here, Sheikh? Are we following chapter one in general? Are we following, we're, we're trying to go, um, we're trying to go uh, in a pattern. You know, last week we did al class, and then this week we're doing uh, uh, the, do, uh, the book of repentance, which is chapter number two. Yeah. So this is something that we are doing. If you want to follow with me, you can follow with me. But sometimes we may reach some kind of, uh, of chapters that I may feel it may not uh, be relevant. So then I may skip it. But for now, we are in the second chapter. We just started. Jazakallah khair for the first answer. That's exactly what I was referring to. The elderly love of Allah with the hand Sheikh. What is the meaning of difference between Rasul, Prophet, or Nabi? The difference between Rasul or uh, Prophet. Uh, Rasul is a messenger. A messenger, as per the hadith this week, but it is mentioned that Allah has sent 124,000 prophets. And 313 messengers. What well, I can the hadith is not authentic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent 124,000 prophets. Yeah. And 313 messengers. But we have some, some issue with authentication of the hadith. But the question is the difference between a prophet and a messenger. A messenger is a prophet that has come with a new law and a book. And he's actually commanded to go outside the area to spread Islam. A prophet, he comes not with a new law. He comes to carry on the same law of the messenger that came before him. The messenger that came? A prophet is someone who comes and carries on? No. A prophet, he is not meant to go out and make da'wah. Yes. A prophet, he carries on the same message that the messenger came before him. You understand what I'm saying? But this is what happened. So you could see after Musa, alayhi salatu was salam, you know, there were many came. So Musa, we had a lot of messengers we had, for example. Let's say, for example, if you look at the uh, message, okay, who came before uh, whether Ibrahim Ali Sallam was a messenger, yes or no? So after him came Ismail. Ismail, Ishaq, or Yaqub, and the people who came down, Yaqub's son, yes or no? And all they carried on. And then they go all the way to carry on to Egypt. So then at that time, which Sharia they were following? Ibrahim. Yes or no? 
and then later on at the same sulala came Musa alayhi salatu wasalam yes or no from the Egypt part and then Musa the messenger yes or no and I got a new message and then Musa was who? Harun the Suleiman yeah yes or no and then there was so then they followed the same and then after that came Dawood and then after that came uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam but after Isa there were no prophet no messengers Yes, sir. Like the prophet, the extension of the yes, the prophet comes in order to carry on the message of the messengers. And then after the prophet, no more prophet and messenger. Yes, yes. All of them are both for prophet. A, a messenger is a prophet. And the prophet is not a messenger. And Nabi Sallam, yeah, all the, yeah, definitely. How many prophets want to? Okay, look again. I'm I'm mentioning I'm mentioning a hadith that authentication is uh this not this word, but it is it is said that the authentication is not authentic. Is that yes, 124,000 prophets and 313 messengers. Allah Taala A'lam. This is what said, but it's not 100 clear. Any question? Al-Nabi or Rasul. Al-Rasul means Risala, which means came with a message. Risala, message. Al-Nabi, yani, Al-Nabi is a uh, prophet. So you don't have the name of the No, 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 no. No, no. The Quran have only 25 names. So can you connect with the other people the reason why they have You might connect, but you don't be sure. You might connect with other people's thing, uh, but you may not be sure. Or people say that uh, thing with the prophet, what's called it? Uh, uh, from the Gita, from Hanuman, all these. It's very, it's very hard for us to believe this. So, yeah, yeah. So, you see, no, we can't. They know because there's no authentication for it. No authentication for it. Allah Ta'ala. You should not have it. No, definitely not. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. I do not know where did it come from, but it is very mashhur, very famous. But then uh, scholars have spoken about its authenticity. Uh, because you remind me of another question. Like, this is the last question. Yeah. Uh, because, like, I asked it before, like, I know this, Haram, I asked it before, like, watching uh, Japanese animation, Haram, because it contains things against Islam, but, like, some people, like, uh, like, Regardless of their nationality, they create characters like with uh, like who does things only Allah can do. These people will be in Jahannam, of course. They will not Look, them. people go in Jahannam or Jannah, that's not my position to speak. Of. But like some people like create characters to challenge Allah. People like, look, people look, drawings, drawings. I know where you're coming from. Drawings has been a disputable ruling among the scholars. Yes. Because many of them, they go, they've gone back to the last question. They've gone back to, uh, they've gone back to how the drawing objective was back in the days. Yes. It was caricature. So you draw, they would draw the salihun, the righteous people, and that would lead towards worshipping them. Nice. This is what they've done with that manad and uzza, what they did back in the days. The ulama says because this is led to these kind of uh, immoral value, so therefore it is haram. The Prophet said, The most severe punishment in Yom al Qiyamah are those who draw. And Musawwir over here is mentioned those who fashion. Allah Musawwir. Yes. Fashion means you fashion someone, caricature, you know, you carve someone. You know, the, the ice carving they do? Yeah. Carve someone. This is what it meant by Musawwir. Some scholars says. Whereas some scholars say that Musawwir Taswir, like how we say. Now, it is okay to draw whatever you want except faces. Because when you're drawing a face, you're actually fashioning a face on your own. You understand? Some scholars over here says, if you're doing that as an educational purpose, it's okay. Some says, no. Because the hadith mentioned about Musawwar, Musawwar. So therefore, for me, I take it in a way that it is better to stay away from 
drawing faces. Yeah. That people who draw animated characters with power or ability, whatever you want. To yeah. Say. Uh, like people who create something out of nothing, they 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 like do, do, uh, write a lot of people. like they make characters with <coughs> distraction. Like, look, I understand. Like, for example, they will do things that have the power of Allah. Like a human being will just in one minute will go to the other country or will just take a, uh, a win and then just... This is not Japanese and Yes, it's like, yes. It's like people who create these this is not permissible. This is not permissible. They, they will not be in Jannah because they... they if, if, they make, Allah, if they make Tawbah to Allah, they'll go to Jannah. No, no, no. If they, if they, if they remain, this, remain like this until they die. Allah Ta'ala A'la. I do not know. But like we cannot create characters which does no. things only on one thing we can't. No, we cannot, but still this is something what they're doing and I do not know. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, shadu la ilaha. One more before I take the sisters here, before they got upset, talking about the party and shouldn't be allowed and the Sahaba wouldn't have, would have done it back. Very good. Uh, Shana is saying, is it allowed to swat mosquitoes and flies with an electric bat to kill them? Yes, because they bring... Is it, is it permissible to kill mosquitoes or flies because they are in the in the house at the time that brings uh, disease? Yes, it's permissible to do so. Subhanakallah, wa hamdik, and shadu ilaha illa Yeah. Anyone have done any work on that? No, no. Some of them have done the research of uh, one to four thousand, but none of them are authentic. None of them are authentic. So even the names of Prophet Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, sons have been mentioned, but oak from Bani Israel. So they're not they're not authentic. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.